If you're learning data analytics, don't waste time on the wrong tools. What tools should you actually learn? Well, it's quite simple. The ones that analysts are really using in the industry, in the field. So I went straight to the source. I got seven real data analysts from companies like Google, 7-Eleven, Tesla, and Apple. And I asked them, what tools do you actually use every day? And first up is a Google data analyst, and her name is Sundas Khalid. She's been a data analyst, a data scientist, and a data engineer for both Google and Amazon. And let's hear what her favorite data tool is. But before we do, as a reminder, this episode is brought to you by Julius AI, your AI data analyst companion. Connect to your databases and or business tools, pull insights in minutes, no coding required. Thanks, Julius, for supporting my work and this episode. If you had to choose one tool you've used the most in your career, what tool is it? Okay, I would have to pick a coding language and it's going to be SQL. And I don't think it's a surprise to anybody listening to this. SQL is regardless if you're a data engineer, you're a data scientist, or you're a data analyst, you have to learn SQL and you have to not even know it, the basics. You actually have to know the advanced level if you really want to grow in these roles. In terms of the tools, I would say like each role uses different set of tools and they don't have anything in common. So like I'll stick with the coding language. I, I like it. I think, yeah, maybe that's not a surprise that uh, SQL, it, it's like the most in-demand data skill in, and honestly, all three job families, it seems like, you know, I think Python gets close for, for data scientists, but like mm -hmm. it's, it's really SQL. Okay. So SQL is the tool you've used the most. Do you, do you, do you have a tool that you like to use more than, than SQL? I think the tool that I really, really enjoy is Google Colab's um, notebooks because uh, they are like so uh, dynamic, like you can like code in R. It's like similar to like Jupyter Notebook, but I guess like I never really, really got the hang of Jupyter Notebooks. I've always been like a Google Colab person. So I really love using Google Colab as like part of my job. And what I love about it is like you can write any language, like you can have one notebook and write so many different languages to produce the results. And you can share that code with just literally a link with somebody else that who's going to like take over your work or like scale it and apply it. That's huge in, in the workplace because like, like you said, like sometimes maybe you're the data scientist and you're writing the code, but you're not necessarily the person who's going to put it to scale, or maybe you just need to share it with your manager or some other product owner or something like that. Uh, but it's also big for those of you who are listening who haven't landed a data job yet, because if you ever do any projects in Python, if you do it like in Jupyter Notebook, you're not going to be able to share it very easily. And like doing it in Google Colab allows you to like have a link that you can send to a recruiter or a hiring manager. And it just makes like your life easier in terms of sharing the work that you've actually done. All right, there you have it. Straight from an expert's mouth, SQL, SQL. It's an incredible data tool and probably the most used data tool in industry. By the way, that clip of Sundas was actually from my full 35 minute interview I did with her. And you can watch the full thing by clicking here on YouTube or checking the description down below for the actual link. Okay, now let's go straight from a Google data analyst to an Apple data analyst. Meet Jen Hawkins. She was literally a delivery driver before going through my accelerator program. And afterwards, she landed a six-figure data analyst job at Apple. Now, I'm guessing most people think analysts at Apple would be in the weeds with Python scripts and machine learning models every day. But that's actually not really the case. The tools she uses every day are probably going to surprise you. What type of tools are, are you using? People might assume it's Fang, so you're doing like, I don't know, AI Inge. programming in like secretive assembly code language or something like that. But what, what tools are you actually using on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, surprisingly, you know, I thought exactly what you said. I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I getting into? But yeah, I use Excel all day and Tableau. So... That's it. Um, I do have the opportunity to use Python, you know, to maybe do automation, but there's another person that is like the go-to. So I just talked to him about what I want to do and, you know, still learn from him because I want to be the one that, you know, knows how to do it. But yeah, just Tableau and Excel. It's amazing how much you can do with, with Tableau and Excel. Like mm -hmm. Those are, are really great tools and you can do so much with them. And, and to me, it's not a huge surprise because I also worked for a big corporation. I worked for, for Exxon. Exxon. Um, and like the companies of America are built on Excel. Like it's, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of Excel um, and Tableau's awesome. So that, that makes a, a lot of sense. And um, what you can do with Excel, like I made all these macros and I just cut three hours of time by doing like just macros. <laughs> and they're like, how did you do that? You're amazing. 
<laughs> that's that is awesome to hear. And I'm glad mm -hmm. to hear the macros alive. I wasn't sure. Yeah. So that's perfect. And I also like that you're learning. Like you're one of the things we talk about in the accelerator program is getting your foot in the data door, like getting getting your just any job we can in the data world and then getting paid to learn. Because right now you're getting yes. paid uh, yeah. a fairly handsome salary. And like you said, you're doing new things. Weekly. Uh, yeah, weekly. <laughs> and you're doing new things in Excel. You're doing new things in Tableau, new things mm -hmm. in Python. And that knowledge grows with you, you know, so you can get yes. a promotion at your job. Like you could potentially become the Python person in, in your group. And basically uh, those skills you'll always have with you and they'll compound the, the rest of your career. And you're getting paid to learn them now. So that's a great option for you. It is. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And, um, and I love it. I love the work to me. It's like, it feels like it's too easy. I'm like, okay, where's the hard stuff coming, you know, but it's, it's really not as difficult as you think. I mean, there, there are some jobs that are very difficult, but again, what gives you an indicator is how long that job description is. And that's how you know how much you'll work. Pick the small one. Like I did. Tableau and Excel, even at a tech giant like Apple. And I'm hoping that gives you some serious confidence that you're learning the right tools right now. Excel, SQL, Tableau, these things are really important. You can catch the full episode with Jen using the show notes down below. Okay, next, let's get into someone else who just pivoted into data analytics. And his name is Ryan Ponder. Ryan went through my accelerator program as well and was able to pivot from a mortgage guy to becoming a data analyst, despite not having any degree, no bachelor's degree whatsoever. Let's hear what he is currently using. What type of tools are you using on the job? Yeah, primarily right now, um, I'm using SQL Server and, and Tableau. In most of my work, I'll, I'll start in SQL, uh, get queries run, get my data structured the way I want, and then I'll take it over to Tableau and then and visualize there. But very soon, we are actually migrating everything to Snowflake. So I've gotten to do a lot of work uh, in Snowflake. The team that I'm on is directly responsible for the entire Veterans United company moving to Snowflake. So i uh, kind of gotten to test some of that stuff, which has been really exciting as well. Super fun. I love that. SQL Tableau. They're always popping up. Those are those yeah. are two of the most used uh, data skills out there. Ryan is living proof that SQL plus a BI tool like Power BI or Tableau is pretty much all you need. You don't need like a hundred different tools. And I love that he's now getting paid to learn Snowflake on the job. I mean, how freaking cool is that? So that's the tools they use in the mortgage industry. But what about the Slurpee industry? Alex Sanchez went from a math teacher in high school to business data analyst after my boot camp. And he uses a somewhat ancient data tool and a tool that's probably the data tool king. Let's listen. What tools are you using specifically? So I mainly use Excel and Access. There's another software we use and I'm using it more now that I've, that I've gained more responsibilities. And then we're just about to start using, I don't even remember what it's called, but it's an agile I mean, that's how much like <laughs> we're in the beginning of it. And even even the senior analyst that I'm working with and the manager above there is like, we're going to learn this together and you're going to be a part of the like creating these new processes, like these this new system. So that got me excited because one, you know, I want the responsibility, but two, like this is going to be used forever now. Like whatever we figure out, like people along the line are, are going to be using this. That's kind of cool. Very and cool. yeah, so so I definitely used Excel when I was a teacher, right? Like we use data grades, the teaks, they like would call them here in Texas. Like there's a, a bunch of data that we use on top of teaching. So when I'm over here and they tell me to do something, right? Like get this report, change the formatting, send it out to other groups. It's like, I used to do that on top of teaching. Like nobody ever thinks about, hey, this teacher is is working with all these spreadsheets they just think like oh they're in front of these the students they great that's it you know it's like so now i get to focus my entire time on just so that's, that's yeah that's pretty cool yeah that's great i think that's awesome and i'm so excited that they're trusting you more and i'm sure you're going to to give them a, a lot of dividends now after listening to that and you're like man i've never even heard of access it's basically just an old crappy version of sql that microsoft used to use but I used it a decent amount when I worked at Exxon, so it still exists, especially in like these large companies. But yeah, other than that, Access and Excel, that's how you analyze Slurpees and gas sales. You can catch my full interview with Alex by clicking on the YouTube card or going to the show notes and cl clicking the link down below. Now, this next analyst has worked for a lot of companies, and he's basically a healthcare analytics expert. So if you're interested in analytics and healthcare, please take notes because you're going to get some great insights that might be key for your data career 
especially if you want to get really advanced technical. I wanted to ask you something you mentioned earlier uh, in terms in terms of tooling, data tools that you guys use. You know, you mentioned Fabric, you mentioned Snowflake. We've, we've talked about Power BI, SQL, Tableau. Do you guys do like, do you guys have like a data stack that you kind of stick to? Or, or do you kind of have to be flexible for what your, your customers and clients want? We typically recommend Microsoft. And so historically it's Azure, Azure Data Factory, the tool set. They've rebranded a lot of it as Fabric, a, a one data stop analytics platform. And um, we're a big fan of Fabric. We've been able to do a lot of really impactful things with it. Every, and we do everything from the data engineering side, ingesting the data, whether it be connecting and doing like Snowflake mirroring is available now, stuff like that. But connecting to different data sets, piping that data over storing it, analyzing it, um, writing SQL code against it. And then the BI application itself, Power BI. Power BI has really taken a big leap in the past, I'd say even like two years, maybe three years, like a massive leap in popularity. I think it's because so many people have, you know, Microsoft Office, but we've done a lot of work with Tableau as well. So we're also Tableau experts and we've implemented Tableau at many other customers and clients. Love Tableau, love Power BI. I highly recommend those two simply because of the opportunities that you can find. People are using those applications. That doesn't mean that I don't think there's value in other BI applications and tools. There's a, a bunch of them out there. But I would say the majority of what we see in the industry is Microsoft Fabric, Power BI, and Tableau. Those are the two that we see the most of. The other things that we see in the industry right now, we do work with Snowflake and we do work with Databricks. Um, those are two cloud platforms that I, I think are also worthy of, of note. But for the most part, we're recommending Microsoft Fabric with our customers who don't already have something. And if they do, usually Microsoft, I would say probably 80% of our clients, if I think about it, uh, are using a Microsoft BI platform. It, it makes sense. A lot, of, a lot of people already have Power BI included in like their giant enterprise Microsoft mm -hmm. deal. When I was at ExxonMobil, we had Power BI uh, available, I think, to a, a majority of customers just from the Microsoft deal that we had. But we still used a fair amount of Tableau as well, although those licenses were a little bit harder to come by as, as an analyst. So, yeah, I, th I think either of those are, are great things to, to build upon and, and learn as, as well. So, like I said, Jason is a little bit more advanced. So that's why you hear him talking about Azure and Fabric. That's not necessarily the case for entry-level data analysts. But he's also dealing with a large enterprise clients all the time that are super entrenched in the Microsoft system. So that kind of makes sense that he's using these tools. A lot of these companies, you need to get the data all in order first using like a data pipeline. That's a lot of data engineering. You got to get it organized and cleaned and everything. And then once it's there, you can just show the trends in Tableau or Power BI. Simple enough. Now, this next financial analyst went from musical therapy, which is something I had never heard about before when she joined my accelerator program to coming out the other end with a financial data analyst job. And she was recently promoted to senior data analyst at Humana. So congrats, Erin. Let's listen to what she uses at Humana. What type of tools are you using on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, so biggest one is SQL. Um, we use SQL Server um, and kind of the whole like Microsoft suite, all of that. Um, lots of Excel for the kind of like financial part of it. Um, but most of my analysis and most of the testing that we're doing is within SQL. Um, and yeah, that's been, it's been really fun to kind of take, uh, the skills that I know, like, uh, just in my own little, like simple projects into, you know, actual, like millions and millions of rows of data, um, and, you know, see, see how it translates. Yeah. Um, I'm sure yeah. some of it is very similar. <laughs> like, like you kind of have the base for it, but it's probably like, mm -hmm. You're doing things you might not have necessarily expected um, and using things kind of in a new way with this, with this new application. Yeah. there And there's a lot of um, kind of logical, like analytical thinking. Um, and, you know, that's part of the learning curve of, of going into, you know, this specific industry, um, like healthcare. I saw it, you know, being in the hospital every day, I thought I knew all of the acronyms um, that came with like the medical, you know, field. Um, but apparently I didn't health insurance is like totally different. So, um, yeah, lots of acronyms, um, lots of kind of the, the logical analytical thinking to get from point A to point B and then figure out how to get there in SQL. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Woo woo. SQL and Excel for the win, even at a fortune 50 company. I hope you're seeing a pattern here. There's a trend, whether it's a fortune five. 
50, 500, or 5,000 company, you're using these similar tools, right? You're using Excel, you're using Tableau. Let's get to the seventh. This is a data analyst at Tesla, and I'm hoping I'll give you a little glimpse into what it's like to actually work at Tesla. You know, what tools are you actually going to be using? While you're at Tesla, what tools did you use the most? Um, I think I used Jira the most and Excel for the validation. Um, I got heavier into the administrative side of, of the software because for Tableau and Jira, I was bringing in add-ins to make them more functional for analytics. Uh, so for companies, uh, you have to connect the Tableau software to what, wherever your data is in the company. When you use Tableau as an individual user, you just connect it to your worksheet. You can connect it to something else if you have it, but typically you just use a worksheet. So that was different. And it was a whole host of security clearances. Um, so I did a little bit of the administrator stuff, but uh, Jira and Excel around my validations. That's awesome. I think that's true. And and you mentioned JQL. Is that kind of like SQL or how how are those related? Yeah, so it's very similar to the commands in SQL. So that's why I was able to learn it pretty quickly. Uh, but then... Um, some things are specific. It uses a lot of uh, a lot more keywords than you would expect, and they're different. Um, the software itself does try to help you, like it lets you click on buttons and produces the code for you uh, to a, an extent. But then you have to have modifications. So I would allow the software to allow me to click to build some of the stuff, but then I would review it and determine, oh, it still needs this functionality or this or this other group of people, and you would have to manually put that into the existing code to make it function. Super neat. So it's basically SQL for Jira, and they try to make it a little bit easier for you to actually write the code. And there you have it, folks. Seven real-world data analysts and the tools they are using every day. Now, if you want an exact list with percentages of the top five most in-demand data tools based on real data where I scraped literally 3,000 data jobs and did all the Python myself to figure this out. It's been viewed over 73,000 times already, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. So you can click right here on YouTube, or you can find the link in the show notes down below. I think it'll be a perfect companion to this episode. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you in the next one.